why in this section we're going to go into a really exciting topic for Ruby developers, and that's talking about Ruby gems. Now, Ruby gems are not magic, even though sometimes with the way they're implemented, it may seem like they are because they provide a ton of functionality, but they really don't. Uh, they don't have anything magical about them. They are simply Ruby code files and they can be implemented in a way to give your applications a lot more functionality uh, that you don't have to write by hand yourself. So I'm going to open up a, a project that I have that has quite a few gems. And this is a gem file in a Rails application. Uh, one thing that you may notice here is Rails itself is a Ruby gem. Uh, Postgres, the database, is another Ruby gem. Uh, you have gems for working with style sheets, like integra integrating the Bootstrap, HTML, CSS framework. Uh, that's a gem. You have different things for handling your JavaScript assets, uh, CoffeeScript files, jQuery, along with ones for helping you build uh, JSON APIs. Uh, you also have ones for documentation. Uh, Rails 12 factor is one for Heroku deployments. Uh, automated testing, RSpec is, has, is one of the more popular Rails gems out there. They also have their own gem apart from the one that's connected to Rails. If you wanna uh, have a RSpec test suite uh, and it's not in a Rails uh, application, uh, you can do that. Uh, auto test uh, using Pry. Uh, here's a very popular one, Devise. Uh, Devise is a gem that with a few lines of code in less than probably about 10, 15 minutes, you can integrate full registration, sign in, sign out, forget your password, email, everything like that. Anything dealing with authentication, Devise does a great job at. This is one of the more popular Rails gems you'll ever run into. And if you uh, go through my any of my Rails courses, uh, I usually use Devise for authentication. Here's a fun one, we'll paginate. This is a gem that lets you automatically integrate pagination into your application. So uh, if you've come from a language where you had to do that manually, you know that that can be kind of a frustrating job and it takes a very long time. And it can also be pretty buggy because you have to know how many items you want on each page and then you have to integrate those in with different collections and then uh, put that all in both the controller and the view. What Will Paginate does is it makes it so that you can simply call a method and then it does all of the pagination math for you automatically. I can even show it to you right here. Let me see. Um, let's see, go uh, post. No, I didn't put it in here. Let me just search through. Apps, controllers. Let's see one that I would have put this into. Locations. There we go. Okay, so this is one called Nationals Controller, and it uh, looks at different subdivisions and puts those inside of, or, or grabs them from the post model. And then you see right here where it has this paginate method. As you may have guessed, paginate method isn't something that ships with Rails. This is actually made available to us from the will paginate gem. So simply by bringing in will paginate and putting that into the file, I can now call this method and then this method handles all of the pagination that I need to do and it can take methods just like any code that you have. Now, the one really important thing, and this is something that I wish I would have learned uh, when I was learning about Ruby gems, I kind of thought they just worked and I didn't really think it through on how it worked. And so that caused some confusion later on. And so I want to make it really clear. Ruby gems are simply 
Ruby files. So there's nothing about them that you need to be worried about um, in terms of understanding the details of you just kind of guessing how they work or anything like that. They're Ruby files. You could technically, you could grab all of the code from one of the gems, put it inside of an application, and it'd work exactly the same way. Gems are simply a way that everything can be packaged together so that you can easily call those methods and it makes it a lot easier to, uh, uh, to do it and you don't have a lot of wasted code everywhere. And it, the other nice thing is you can see it also manages the different versions. So this is something that I find really helpful. Um, some of the other ones, and I there are tens of thousands of gems, so I'm not going to go into all of them. I just want to show some of the popular ones that are out there and what they do. Uh, these ones uh, are all for image management. So if you need to be able to upload files, uh, Carrier Wave, Mini Magic, uh, Fog, Figaro. Figaro actually handles credentials. Uh, Fog connects you to the AWS API. Um, and then so you have a, quite a few uh, quite a few ones that can do things like helping you upload files. Honey Badger is a great service that I use for handling errors. Anytime that I get an error that comes through, uh, there are somebody, even if it's on the other side of the world, runs into an error page on an application. Within a moment, I'll get an email or text message from Honey Badger saying, hey, somebody ran into this error. It sends all of the credentials, everything that they did wrong, all the parameters so that I can work on fixing it before it becomes a problem. So this is a, a really great service. I use this in pretty much every app I have. New Relic, this is for performance monitoring. Uh, this particular application uses Rails Admin, so uh, this is a admin service that uh, lets the site owner control a lot of the different things on the app without me having to build a full management system for them. It's, uh, it's just a nice uh, shortcut that sometimes I'll use. Uh, the only problem with it is once it starts to get into having a lot of customizations that are needed, then it can get problematic. And so I have had times where I've had a client who wanted this because they liked the way it looked and it was a lot cheaper and easier to just integrate this. But then once I started to have a lot of customizations, I eventually had to scrap the whole thing and then build that from scratch. And it ended up costing them more money in the long run. But uh, Rails Admin is a really powerful gem and tool if you need it. Uh, Pundit is what I use. It's what I typically like to use for handling permissions. So if you have a user that uh, you want this one user to access this page, but not this other page, Pundit's a great way of doing it. It's also has a great reputation in the Rails and Ruby community because it's very Ruby based. So it doesn't really try to put a lot of uh, kind of secret magic methods in there. When you're using Pundit, you are pretty much just using Ruby, which is a great way to build an application. Quiet Assets, I've done a video on this one before. It's a great way of, if you don't like seeing all the asset calls that get uh, sent into the uh, get sent into the terminal, it does a great job of silencing those. Breakman is something that's a fun gem. It shows you a lot of different security vulnerabilities. If you have any, uh, you can run it and it shoots all of the different potential things uh, so that you can go fix them. Um, and then you can also see with Ruby, well, this is a Rails thing, so you don't really worry about it. But if you are wondering why some of these are in groups and they say development, this means that this gem is never called when it's in production. So you wouldn't want this, this is just a diagnostic tool. You would never want this to be on the actual website. So you can control it that way. But you know, that doesn't have anything to do with gems itself. That's something in Rails. Uh, NP progress bar, this is just a cool a uh, little piece of JavaScript that can get integrated. Uh, I'm using the Thin web server, and the uh, Thin is just a server. It works nice on Heroku. I like using this for smaller apps because all I have to do is uh, put this in where it says Gem Thin, and Heroku picks it up and switches 
away from the default server, which is pretty slow, and uses Thin, which is gives some better performance. It's still not what I'd use in a for a big app. I usually use something like Puma for that, um, but it, it's great for kind of smaller, maybe medium sized apps. Uh, CK editor right here. Uh, the, if you ever need to build a a text area and you want to give the user the ability to make things bold, underline, those kind of things. Things that you may see in like a WordPress site or something like that. CK Editor is a rich text editor that lets you do all that. And uh, last one, Sanitize. I put these two together because you want to uh, usually clean out what the users are doing so you wouldn't want someone to upload some nasty javascript or you know something like that sanitizes a gem lets you manage that so this is by no means a full review on all the ruby gems out there these are just some very popular ones that i use and they seem to come up and i use them in a lot of different applications so i thought it'd be a good case study to walk through you uh, with them and in the next video i'm going to show you a very practical way on how they work and how you can use them.